This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on today's episode, he's going to be taking a look at more of the weapons from Battlefield 2042. We can't, of course, have a, a near future set game without some completely new guns, and this is one of those. So it's a bit of a head scratcher, but it looks suitably futuristic, and it seems to set itself apart from the other weapons in the game pretty well. For more, make sure to check out our previous episode on Battlefield 2042, and if there are any other games, guns, or mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comment section below. And of course, if you'd like to help out the Royal Armouries Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. What would be potentially a bit of a, a bit of an older design by the time frame of this game, the FN Scar. We have an example here. Um, so the one we've got here is the Scar L for light, which is found a bit less favour than the Scar H for heavy, which is in 7.16 NATO. The proportions to me, a little hard to see without a profile view, they look a little bit more like the 5.56 gun, this one. There's a fair, it obviously has a, a longer receiver, a longer ejection opening, but it's the same design. Might be somewhat controllable in, controllable in automatic fire, just because you're losing some of that pressure. The pressure drops off as the as the bar bullet leaves the short barrel, which limits your you know, reduces your your ballistic uh, effectiveness. But would also, in theory, reduce the recoil somewhat. Although it would still be a real handful because it's such a short weapon. It has an automatic function. You wouldn't recommend using it. I don't know how well it handles in the game. So that the uh, battlefield tradition of inserting some unexpected guns continues with um, something that's called the V car, car for carbine though, I imagine, which is actually a Keltec design. Now Keltec are a fascinating American company that come up with all sorts of weird and wacky designs. And this is a carbine spin-off of their PMR-30 pistol. And so we're expected to believe that this, is, this has been adopted for, for military service which seems unlikely especially in the cmr 30s caliber which is uh 2 winchester magnum now that's quite a high velocity cartridge for a pistol cartridge but it is still a pistol class cartridge so it's perhaps questionable in terms of lethality then again in the game it's clearly meant to serve as a sort of lesser weapon anyway i suppose that in the context of the game we have these sort of semi-mercenary characters so the fact that this is not a military firearm per se isn't really a showstopper for this game. This is the uh, Chukavin, I think it is. Um, SV Ch. It, it's really a designated marksman rifle, DMR, which is mostly how we see it used there. Although, oddly, it has the same smart rail system as all of the other guns in the game. So, I'm, somehow, all of the nations of the world standardise on this future rail system. It's not too outlandish. We've all managed to standardise on Picatinny rails. Can't really speak to the effectiveness or, or, the, or the realism of this. I've only seen pictures, like most of us. Various export bans and sanctions and things mean that we don't get our hands on the very latest Russian firearms. Worth mentioning, this is a Kalashnikov. I mean, it's not. It's, it's not an AK, but it is a, it is a product of Kalashnikov concern. Uh, one of a number that they've they're been working on to sort of, well, diversify and future-proof the business. We can't, they can't rely on the good old AK forever. So uh, a nice futuristic looking real world gun, pretty well represented. It's got, you know, it's semi-automatic, it's powerful. I think they've done a good job on it. Well, I like what I'm seeing of the Saiga 12 in this. It's got some good punchy rate of fire and, and sound effect and effectiveness as well. What seems like a, a reasonable range for shotgun, for buckshot, people are getting taken out in fairly short order. So we do have a, um, a couple of Saiga 12s actually. This, it's quite vanilla though, compared to the one in the game. Ours has got a short barrel and a breaching attachment on it. it makes it look quite purposeful, I think is the word. But it's otherwise pretty standard. The one in the game is, I believe, based on a, a, a more modern variant anyway, and it's 
looks quite, well, a little bit three gun, so a little bit competition. It's got the rail system on it, it's got a side charging handle with the big open slot in the side. Probably not ideal for, for military purposes. It's got a receiver that takes a AR-15 uh, pistol grip, so you can swap that out for different things. And the buffer tube on the back for, and I'm not, I can't recall if the if they're compatible with actual AR-15 butt stocks, but it's it's of that style. It's got cheek riser on it. So uh, tricked out, but not too tricked out. Doesn't even have an optical sight on it in this configuration that, that Dave's put together. But he has put a little charm on there just to uh, just to remind me. <laughs> Right, this is, um, this is a gun that actually exists, both as the PKP uh, Pechenegg, which is a, and a sort of LMG-specific variant of the PKM, and then this fairly wacky-looking bullpup version of the PKP. That also does exist. It's not a factory-produced gun. I believe it was invented by or for a certain uh, Special Forces unit that wanted uh, an even more compact assault machine gun, and it achieves that of course so it's not it's not a future weapon really it's something that's in use now it might still be in use then maybe a trend starts for doing this maybe the P maybe the pkp supplants the pkm around the world and so bullpup versions of it become more prominent it's um not unreasonable to have it in the game um, it's nice to see incidentally that the muzzle flashes aren't crazy in this game they're quite plausibly sized and and rendered we've moved away finally from the gigantic multi-star flashes on absolutely everything it actually made it harder to shoot in the game never mind if you were shooting the thing in real life things are looking a little bit more plausible now i think This is the what used to be the Steyr TMP and is now the um, B&T MP9 with a few tactical bells and whistles. I think that might just be the latest version of the, of the MP9 actually. But what I what keeps distracting me is the charm hanging off the side, which <laughs> which I, I didn't, couldn't spot what it was at, at first, but it is in fact a glow stick. So this is a machine pistol for a, a 90s raver, I suppose. Might draw unwanted fire in your direction if you have a glowing item hanging off the side of your gun. And pretty distracting as well while you're shooting. So sometimes games teach me about guns. I say sometimes, all the time when I was younger. One of my main <laughs> main ways of learning about firearms. Until you realise there's a whole wealth of books and uh, trusted sources and contacts out there. But um, occasionally something crops up that I've not heard of. And what is actually a DSR precision rifle. It's a modern CNC machine, desert tan, tactical looking sniper rifle with some charms hanging off it. But what's interesting about it, I think, or visually interesting about it, and also in terms of gameplay changes, is the fact that from first person view, you would for be forgiven for thinking this was a conventional rifle with a magazine and a magazine well in front of your pistol grip, in front of your trigger. But then you realize, actually, no, this is a bullpup with the action and the magazine at the back. And what's in the faux magazine well in front is a spare magazine. So this is not unheard of. This is the inverse of the case with the Steyr Scout rifle, where it's a conventional but short precision rifle as well, actually. And there's a magazine back here in buttstock that looks like it could be a bullpup configuration, but it's not. It's a spare magazine. So the opposite of this. It's unusual in that respect, which is always good. New stuff is, is always good. Whether it's meaningfully any different than an equivalent bolt-action sniper from another game, don't know. We'll have to see how the gameplay shakes out. An interesting trend to follow in uh, modern firearms is actually a really old trend. Modular systems where you have like a fire control unit with a trigger and you have like a uh, the slide and the, and the barrel. We've, we've taken this idea of a, of a stock to the next level, well twice actually. Firstly mounting the whole gun into a stock, like into a chassis like the CAA Roni. We've now gone to the next level with this thing where it's a SIG P320 but you get rid of the frame and you replace that with a carbine frame if that makes sense. So you drop in your slide and barrel, you drop in your fire control unit and you have a little pistol carbine 
So we get features like a little flick out stock. We see the, the player hit the button and the stock flicks out for quick deployment. So you can shoot this thing one or two handed as a pistol, or you can deploy the stock and shoulder it for much increased accuracy. It gives, it gives options. Now this is something that's probably of more use to police, security forces, something like that, where they have a limited number of pistols in the inventory and maybe you don't want a 556 carbine for a particular application so you convert like a transformer your pistol into a carbine at least that's kind of what the intent is remains to be seen whether this will really catch on but you know in the, in this freedom of choice environment where we have essentially um, mercenaries running around with kit that they've acquired you might well want a very bulky pistol that allows you uh, especially if you're using a sniper or dmr as your primary something that can function as a pistol caliber carbine. We can't of course have a, a near future set game without some completely new guns and this is one of those. So AC-42, I'm not sure what significance that may or may not have. This thing looks more than anything like the Thales F90, which is the um, Steyr AUG, modernized with a chunkier modern receiver with modular features. It's got some of the same design cues on there, certainly, as that. It's got a lot of recoil, and I think that's because I'm seeing it mostly in burst mode. So we've got a very high rate of fire, pretty much hyper burst, I would say. But the weird thing about the recoil is, and I've seen this in games before, rather than going up and right, it kind of goes up and left doesn't really make much sense in terms of how a rifle um, interfaces with your upper body. So it's a bit of a head scratcher, but it looks suitably futuristic and it seems to set itself apart from the other weapons in the game pretty well. PP19 Bison, I think is the right pronunciation. Sorry, this is a bit clattery. Now this is a Perhaps an odd choice, because as far as I know, this fairly famous, but slightly clunky, helical magazine feed arrangement on the PP-19 has been superseded by a fairly MP5-esque box magazine magazine well. So same basic design, but with a conventional magazine feed. So I, perhaps this is still being, being made and improved upon, I don't know, but as far as I knew, this thing was kind of fading away. So whether this would still be around in the future, I don't know. Well, it'd still be around, it'd still be some in existence, but whether they would receive the smart rail upgrade that we see on this one is perhaps questionable. Now, probably more interesting for me than, than this gun is the optical sight, which has got two, well, some interesting nods toward current and near future tech. We've got a battery indicator, we've got a Wi-Fi and some sort of mobile signal indicator which is interesting so it's networked in some way although what features that provides you is not clear from from gameplay the two useful features for gameplay though are a a, a rangefinder bottom left this is this is becoming very common in sites nowadays and then bottom right we have a much more useful iteration of the good old pulse rifle ammo counter from aliens where instead of having to check the side of your gun it's actually in your field of view, in your sight. I don't see any harm in having that in there, and I, I'm sure that someone at some point will have an integrated round counter in your sight. Okay, this is an interesting choice. This is actually the Denel NTW-20, or, or it's, that's the real world gun, which is a 20 millimeter, but a shortened 20 millimeter. It's not like the Hispano round, it's truncated to make it possible to fire it from the shoulder. Now this version's called the NTW-50, implying that may, maybe it's 50 BMG, but the effect that we see it having here on some pretty serious um, armored vehicles, it's gotta be some sort of armor piercing 20 millimeter round 
minimum really. So the fact the fact that you have a, a rifle that's capable of doing damage to vehicles in game, it's actually having an effect is a good thing because there's been a you know often your barrets and things are they just end up being used as glorified sniper rifles and they do very little against vehicles. In this you really get a sense of the power of this thing, which is offset by it you know, being quite slow to wield. It's got a low magazine capacity and of course the scope limits your your field of view to try and use it in close quarters. And it was all going so well. <laughs> this kind of breaks uh, immersion for me, I must admit. This is a, a Marlin Model 1895 with M-Lock rail system and inexplicably the trademark Battlefield 2042 smart powered rail is on there as well. At least it's a moderately powerful cartridge, 4570, it's got a fair bit of um, oof behind it but it's not going to penetrate contemporary body armour which is still being used at this time if not more, more prolific than it is now. It would hurt but it's not going to penetrate much at all frankly. About the only advantage it has is the ability to keep it topped up with rounds which in certain close quarters situations might be an advantage but not really when you when you see the the drills people can do in terms of reloading now stuff like this to me would make more sense in its like old west trim as something that's just a found object in the level to use for fun or for bragging rights to say you killed someone with it the idea that this is somehow a contemporary weapon in the future is just nonsense We've always got uh, links in the description f for you to, to follow if you wish to go over to the Royal Armoury site uh, where we have the ability for you to donate if you would wish to, uh, perhaps become a member and we have our events, our social media channels, our own YouTube channel as well. And something I, I thought I'd mention, some of you might be interested, uh, I'm also associate editor of the journal Armax, which is an academic journal, so it's not, not perhaps for, every, for everyone's uh, taste, but it does cover um, Firearms from about 1880 to the present day um, in a serious way. So if you really want to deep dive into some, some interesting topics around um, historic firearms, but all the way up to the present day, it might be worth checking out over on... Um, there's a link in the description for that as well. Um, but I'll see you again next time. Thanks very much.